I'm Sonia. And I'm Tim. And this is our tiny house in northern Colorado. Tim and I met like two and a half or so years ago <laughs> um, when we were both guiding, uh, river guiding. And now we live here. Uh, I'm in my third year of my program at CU Boulder. Uh, and I'm getting my master's degree at Colorado School of Mines. We've kind of always been tiny. Like we met when I was living in my van and... And I was living in my camper that I had yeah. built out. So we just wanted a space that was big enough to live in full time, but was really easy to move around. Yeah. The house is eight and a half feet wide, 13 feet tall, and overall about 32 feet long. The parking spot here in Northern Colorado is nice. It's on an old farm. So we have a, a small four, four foot by eight foot deck in front of the house uh, with a little log step. Uh, and then we, we decided to go with aluminum cladding for the exterior. Yeah, it was super quick to put up and easy and cheap and, and it looks cute. <laughs> um, and then you can see our solar setup up top there, which is, which is pretty cool. Like our whole roof is covered in panels besides our skylight. We just have like a little outdoor living space eventually. I think it would be cool to do a much bigger outdoor space, maybe when we're somewhere more permanent, but for now this is good. And so this is like our front entryway. We just put this deck on a couple months ago, just like a little place to just kind of sit, hang out, do yoga. And then we just have this little wood frame around the door because I feel like it makes it feel a lot more homey. And then around back here is the shed. This is one of the coolest parts, the gear shed. So this is where all of our fun things live. Yeah, so we have our cooler, uh, we have all of our camping and backpacking stuff, we have our river boards and our uh, rafting helmets and such. Skis. Yes, two sets of skis up top. Uh, and then here we have uh, the bulk of the electronics for the, for the house. So we have half of our battery lives right in this wooden box right here. Uh, and then we have our 6,000 watt inverter. Uh, we have our charge controller from Outback Power, uh, our water heaters over in this corner, uh, and then our water filter. Yeah. So we have a total of 56 Generation 1 Nissan LEAF battery modules. They're all wired up, so we have a 48 volt nominal system that's fed by this main charge controller and then this inverter actually has a battery charger and changeover switch in it so uh, we've had to charge up two or three times now that the sun the sun's getting lower in the sky uh, so all you all we have to do is plug into 240 this will charge the battery and supply all the loads inside the house as well uh, because we were planning on having an off-grid solar setup we knew we'd have to fit the battery somewhere uh, we knew we'd have to fit the water tank somewhere and we have a bunch of camping stuff that we didn't want to get rid of because we don't just want to stop doing that so we knew that we'd have to have some sort of a space in the house to make that work we figured we'd utilize the dovetail that came with the trailer uh, because it slants down so it'd be kind of weird to build a platform there so we just built it slanted uh, and then fit all of our utilities and hanging storage in here I love how organized it is. I did, I did the, all the shelving and everything, which I was like, hmm, okay, it's, it looks good, fit everything in there pretty nicely. And then the pegboard is cool. Never had a pegboard before. Yeah, having all the space for my tools is, is, is really nice to just be able to hang, not everything, but hang a lot of the stuff I used on a day-to-day -day basis up. <laughs> so back here behind the house, we just have a clothesline hanging up. Uh, about November is when we, <laughs> we have to start drying our clothes either inside or at yeah, my sister's house, but yeah, <laughs> but it but it's worked so far. So, because mm -hmm. um, we have a washer, but we don't have a dryer, so yeah, hang dry. It's been kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And then we can show you where our water tank is as well over here. So this little cutout is where the water tank goes in the house under there. It's 150 gallon tank lives under there, so it's pretty good. Last like week or so, maybe more, mm -hmm. depending on how many showers we take. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Birch. Do you sleep? Do you want to sleep better? Well, check out Birch. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes non-toxic mattresses and sleep products that are comfortable, environmentally conscious, and stylish. Huh? Birch recently introduced the Birch Lux natural mattress, an upgrade to their original well-loved Birch mattress. And it takes comfort and luxury to the next level. 
relieves pressure points, has targeted lumbar support, and over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils to cradle your body. We've had our Lux mattress for about a week now, and it is absolutely comfortable. And as a hottie, I appreciate how breathable it is, keeping me nice and cool. We love our Birch Lux mattress, and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. See the link in the description or go to birchliving.com slash tinyhouse for 400 off your mattress and two free pillows. So as you can see, there's nine solar panels up on the roof. They're all rated over 300 watts for a total of 2.7 kilowatts of solar. Uh, they all get combined into a combiner box in the back and then ran over the edge and then into the shed. Uh, why don't we pop inside and take a look around? So this is the inside of our house. It's about 250 square feet total. And really the goal with the house was to make a space that was nice to live in. I wanted to look forward to coming home to it and comfortable enough to have two people or some guests over as well. This is our kitchen. So we've got nice open shelving, which I think is, is really cute. And then we put um, these little indirect LEDs back there and a little dimmer on them, which is pretty cute. And we've got like all our refillables and everything. And then kind of magnetic everything for kitchen storage because we do have a lot of kitchen supplies so you know magnetic spice rack spices knives and then these hooks which is cool because then I mean it's easy access and then also we get to show off like our pottery that we made or our friends made and stuff so that's mm -hmm. also nice um, we have a coffee bar so <laughs> Tim makes us coffee every morning from our coffee bar <laughs> and then nice nice big sink for when we have to wash dishes which is really nice just to have this big sink, another restore purchase. And then the butcher block, we, f we found um, as kind of like scraps of butcher block that we bought and then we fit them together. We weren't sure how that was gonna work and it actually worked out pretty well, so that's good. We did buy our cabinets because we're not cabinet makers, <laughs> um, but then what we did do is we bumped them up on two by fours to give us like a, a little bit more height and then also just some added storage down here. So we built these drawers down here for um, extra storage, like cleaning supplies, stuff like that, that you don't get into quite as much, which has been really nice just to have a whole another drawer than what we would have had otherwise. So this is from the 60s or the 70s, not totally sure, but um, we got it and then Tim fixed it so it works now. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, just had to cool. knock the rust off and repaint some stuff. Yeah. Over here it kind of like doubles our counter space to have this bar top right here which is really nice because it's at about the same height. It was important you know while we still have school left like this year and then I still have next year as mm -hmm. well until I graduate to have somewhere that we can like do homework and it's nice to have a spot that's designated to sit and eat because in our last place we just had to eat on the couch. Um, so now, now we have a table, which is cool. Oh, another really cool thing that we figured out how to put in our house is a dishwasher. We got this little apartment-sized dishwasher, which just pulls out right here. We put it under the fridge, um, and we can wash all of our dishes and everything. Dishwashers actually end up saving you a lot of water and you know time, obviously, too, but it's, it's cool to be able to save water with that appliance. Our heater lives down there as well, and that is a propane heater, so which is just nice never to have to worry about running out of heat, obviously, especially when we're out of the house for a long time. We don't want anything to freeze because it does get really cold here. And that's been working really, really well. So I guess it's been really cool having more light in our house and in a bigger space to be able to have all of our plants and everything and have that. I feel like it makes it feel really green and natural in here, which is really nice having all of our kitchen stuff here, being able to see it. These are my grandma's teacups that um, she gave me, so it's nice to have those to look at and to use. You know, them being there makes you want to use them more, like have a little tea party, which is sweet. So this was my first 
try it grouting. I did the, the grout here and I did the grout on the penny floor. So that was really fun. I love these. They kind of feel like a, a river, I guess, running through the kitchen, which I think is really nice and kind of connects everything together with the colors in the house and just kind of feeling really warm, which I like. With grouting, you just have to be kind of quick. Like you can't really take a long time to do it or it will dry. So I definitely have a couple spots where it's not perfect. It, it really wasn't too bad, especially with a more straightforward tile like this. Like we didn't have to cut a lot of the tile um, and it could kind of just go on there as is, which was really nice trying something for the first time. I think a lot of things in the house, like we just had to keep pretty simple since it was our first time doing it. It's really nice to have a full-size fridge as well, just because I do love to cook, Tim loves to cook, and we like to eat really good food, so it's nice to have a full-size fridge and then also a freezer. It's a little tall, but it's not too tall, so it still works. Um, it's actually kind of nice. We never have to bend over to get into the fridge. And then this, this is really beautiful. My friend Jesse made this for us um, out of reclaimed floor that they ripped out of a house in Portland, and they brought this for us and made it, and it's uh, really beautiful. And they stained it, and it's our blind door. One of the other design challenges of the house was figuring out how tall we could make this to maximize the amount of water storage we could have under it without making the bathroom too short to stand all the way up in and like take a solid shower and not feel crammed. So we ended up being able to fit 130 gallons of water down there, or 150, 150 gallons of water down there. And that's, that's pretty good. That should last a really long time. One little thing I forgot to add is we have this little collapsible coffee table from our old house that we pull out sometimes and it just sets up with the legs and we use that by the couch sometimes if we want to hang out there. And then it just tucks away. We decided to build it ourselves because I've always built my own stuff and we figured it would be a really good project to uh, collaborate on. Yeah, I, I really like designing spaces and making them really beautiful and learning how to build things. Like this is only the second thing, that I, third maybe thing that I built. So it was really cool and it, it took us three months. It took us three months to build because that's how much time we had to build it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we ended school in May, not just the end of May, and then we got going on it full time and then we didn't take a break until the weekend before we towed it over here to start school in August. Yeah. <laughs> it was a full-time job all summer, more than, more than a full-time job. <laughs> yeah. It was taxing, but now we're done. <laughs> so now to head up into the bathroom, we'll just kick out this step, step on up in here, turn on the lights. Uh, we have some more LED indirect lighting in here. And then we have, uh, our bathroom is laid out very simply. Uh, we have our washing machine, our washing supplies, uh, big countertop, it's just nice to have. Uh, we had extra of this, um, of the butcher blocks. We decided to put some in here. Uh, and then we have just some storage. And then we have a whole, this is the, this is the section that's above the shed. Um, and from inside the shed, it can only be so tall and you can't utilize all that space. So we just decided that we would cap it there. And then we would have some storage space in here with some lights. Yeah, so we have about two feet deep of storage throughout here. And then moving over here into the shower, uh, we just went with a corrugated metal shower. Um, same thing with the storage, just some you know extra food supplies, toilet paper, stuff like that. And then to save some space, we went with kind of a tight up uh, shower head that goes pretty tight to the ceiling. Now down here, this is our nature's head toilet. We tossed around the idea of getting, you know, making our own toilet, getting an incinerating toilet, but this just seemed like the most cost effective uh, and easiest solution. And also in the floor, um, a couple features that are really nice is this flooring that we got to do. So Sonia, would you want to talk about this flooring? Um, yeah, sure, okay. So the floors are one of the things that I had the most fun with when designing the house and, and building it. This floor in the shower we made out of a lot of rocks from my rock collection, from places I've been, and even some shells in there. And it's really good for your feet to stand on it while you shower, which is kind of cool. And then for the penny floor, uh, we collected pennies for a long time. We had our family collect pennies for a long time. We still had to go to the bank and get more pennies because it takes a shocking amount of pennies. But we used that for the floor and then some dimes around here. And then this is also Tim's coin collection that he had that we used in the middle for the spiral. So it's pretty cool. 
And these are coins from around the world, so you have them from everywhere. And then this one is Tim's favorite because this is a game token from Mukluk Land, which is in Alaska where he grew up, so he really likes that one. This took a shocking amount of time, but I'm really happy with it. Like, if we were to do this again, I would love to have more time. The time that we had, and it, we made it really beautiful with that time, so that's mm -hmm. also special in its own way, but if we were to do it again, it'd be nice to have some extra time to be able to do more of those, like, you know, really tiny, super detailed, oriented, time-consuming things that we didn't get to do yeah. in the house. But. Yeah, towards the end, we did have to decide, like, yes, we did want to build this, but we only have the time to buy something yeah. that'll work. Yeah. So yeah, adding more time would be, yeah. just allotting that more time would be, <laughs> would be nice. With the time that we had, like we did spend about a year and a half prior to starting our build, like collecting things for our build. So it, it honestly would have been nicer to have more time for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you do need space to store that stuff. But I would say like 50% of our house is reused mm -hmm. or found. Yeah. So. It would have been nice to be able to say a higher percent, but that's, yeah. what, that's what we have. <laughs> so the house cost overall about $38,000. Um, that's about $30,000 for the house and then about $8,000 for the off-grid setup. I think planning would be the biggest advice I would give someone and, and taking time to collect materials if sustainability and also budget is something important to you when you're thinking about doing a tiny house, like really focusing on finding for your cheap things and collecting them and letting that be a part of your design process rather than trying to find things to fit something that's already in your mind, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, really just um, ability to adapt, especially if you've not built a house before like we hadn't. Um, you're going to make plenty of mistakes. So just be okay with that and be willing to work with that. So here's our main living space. Uh, we have our couch built in here. Uh, it's a six foot long couch, so if you need to, you can always sleep on it, or friends can always sleep on it. Uh, underneath the couch, we have an, we have some cubbies here. Uh, this one's open for shoes, as you know, you don't want it cluttering up the walkway. Um, and then we have a couple of these you can open, just blanket storage, and you know, store our vacuum cleaner and grocery bags and stuff like that. Moving on, uh, we have our closets here. Uh, I think you can guess whose is whose. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is probably the most amount of, of hanging storage I've had in a while. Uh, much bigger than the van or the camper. So Yeah, so, so this one's Tim's. It's very organized and we have them like all locker style with the <laughs> doors used and stuff like that. Um, and then this one's mine. A little bigger. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it's nice. I didn't have to get rid of any clothes as long as you just seasonally swap them out and stuff like most people do in their houses anyways. So it's pretty nice closet space there um, and then the drawers are kind of like our dresser as well besides this one and this is um, for all of my art supplies so that's a pretty deep I have four of these in here so making space just for the things that we use a lot super accessible also other storage space is this step right here um, so this is where our backpacks go and then also all my yoga stuff which is a, a lot so, <laughs> so that's all in there which is really nice as well just utilizing all the space that we can here another nice aspect uh, another nice feature that we have in the kitchen and kind of in the living room here is this heat saving air exchanger uh, when this thing is on it is constantly replacing the air that builds up inside the house so it lets out moisture um, just kind of stale air exchange it with fresh air uh, and it heats up that air as it comes in as well. So it, you know, energy saving. We also have a projector up here, uh, which is nice because it's, it's hidden away. It's, you know, it's kind of out of the way. Uh, and then whenever we need, we just take our projector screen, uh, extend it out, hook it up to the door, and then we get to watch TV. Yeah. And then also we have our flooring here. It's a hardwood bamboo flooring. Yeah, we got just over 250 square feet of it for free from Craigslist. Craigslist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just a couple was renovating their condo and they just didn't want it anymore. So we came and picked it all up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then over here we have our big, our big window here. It's locked, which is really nice. You can get a really big breeze flowing in here in the summer when it's hotter. Uh, and then we have these really nice curtains that were actually curtains that were from your van mm -hmm. that we got to take out and uh, salvage. And so we have a set of these. Uh, and then we just had enough fabric to do a set in the bedroom as well. So Sonia, do you want to go show them the bedroom? Yeah. 
So this is the bedroom, like it's really nice. We can stand up, um, lots and lots and lots of light. I love having a skylight, I always wanted a skylight and it's the domed one so you can actually kind of stand up and look up in there which is cool. It's a nice little walkway right here um, and then we have Dobie's bed over here because she likes to sleep with us and this makes her feel like she's <laughs> with us but she still has her own space. Um, and then just like a little bit of nightstand action over there. And then, yeah, I guess I'll show you under the bed too because this whole thing lifts up. We need to put another bed lift in it because it's kind of heavy. It's not even full, but we have all of our camping stuff, extra clothes, costume bin, um, some PFDs and ski stuff down there, um, which is really nice just to have all that extra hidden storage that you don't want out. Oh, and then these, these are our little dream catchers I made. This one is from all of the things I collected while I was living in Oregon and then this one is from the first overnight river trip that Tim and I did together and then just kind of made them into little dream catchers that we have there. So those are pretty cute. So we pay $6.50 a month to be here with our water hookup, which is really nice. We found them on Craigslist. Or they found us on Craigslist because we yeah. posted an ad. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have this wonderful spot. They have room for two tiny houses, which is great. There's only us here right now, but it'd be cool to have a tiny neighbor sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted a place that was close enough for both of us to get to school. It is a little bit of a drive, but that's because it's hard to find parking around Boulder but that, you know, we'll figure it out. We just wanted to be somewhere close enough, but also have some space to exist without being around other people all the time is really nice too. Yeah, and this space is nice because we get to come out of the city every day and it just, it feels nice to wake up on farmland. with just farmland around, you know, just with trees and, you know, all the chickens roaming ducks. around. Yeah, the chickens and ducks are cute. <laughs> video and for stopping by tiny house expedition i'm alexis and i'm christian don't forget to like comment and subscribe and for more tiny home tours and stories click the videos below and join us on instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there all right thanks guys have a good one